Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to talk about how you can bring a seemingly dead decoder back to life and get your locomotive back on the road. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Okay, so just what do we mean when we say that a locomotive decoder is dead? Because, you know, that's a pretty imprecise term. Some people might mean that their locomotive is not responding properly to the commands that they're giving it. It might not move. The lights might not come on when they give the command. The sound may not come on at all. Uh, so what can you do to figure out what the problem really is? Well, first off, be aware that things can happen on a model railroad that can confuse decoders. Probably the most common thing that happens uh, to decoders that can confuse them is if you uh, have a short, an intermittent short, or a series of intermittent shorts on your model railroad. And this happens very, very frequently on railroads because people, when they're running trains, tend to forget to make sure that the turnouts are set properly. And they'll run into a switch set against them and shut down the model railroad. And I've outlined in the past uh, various ways that you can install circuit breakers and the like to try to prevent these kinds of, of, of shorts from occurring. And what happens when these shorts occur can really uh, alter what, go, what is stored in your locomotive decoder's memory. And the reason for that is complex. It gets into some very complex electronics. Uh, and basically what it comes down to is there are a lot of capacitors involved in, in uh, command stations and boosters, and the wires themselves can act as capacitors and store electrons. And suddenly when a short occurs, a lot of the electrons that are stored in capacitors and that are stored in wires, uh, your bus wires, uh, will suddenly surge out onto the track. And those surge of electrons, I liken them to uh, a cattle stampede, and suddenly you let a a bunch of cattle start running and they're going to go in all kinds of wild directions and you know they're going to bump into things and it's going to create problems in your decoder. So these electrons you know they get started and they go flying out onto the track they go zipping into your decoders memory and they bump into other electrons stored in memory and things like, like that and it just causes havoc sometimes. And, you know, it can change the uh, value in CV29 so that your uh, decoder, it thinks it uh, should be responding to the short address and you're using the long address. So that's one thing that can happen. It can change all kinds of settings as far as sound and, and lights and functions and things of that nature. Consequently, the first thing you can try to do is isolate the problem, okay? If it's something that has to do with, you know, just... The, uh, the, the, the address, you might need to reprogram the address. You might need to reprogram CV29. You might need to go in and start reprogramming all of your other functions related to sounds and the like. That's why I am such a big proponent of computer programs like Decoder Pro. Because with Decoder Pro, you save all the settings for each decoder you know, in a separate file. And you can bring them back up and you can go ahead and reprogram every setting in your decoder and bring it back exactly to the way it was before it went through this, um, you know, loss of memory and seeming death. What I recommend, though, is if you're using Decoder Pro, don't get in there and suddenly uh, give the command to reprogram everything. And the reason for that is that if you try to reprogram a whole bunch of CVs all at one time, you may actually store a bunch of erroneous values in the decoder's memory. And, and that just happens. It's, it's one of those things, and it's gotten much more prevalent, I feel, 
uh, as we've gotten into the more modern decoders that use index CVs and things of this nature. And over time, uh, the programming sequences have, have had to change because of that. And as a result, some older command stations might not work as well with the current crop of, of, of decoders that have uh, very complex index CV settings. Uh, as newer uh, command stations do, and as Decoder, Decoder Pro does. And Decoder Pro has, has also become more efficient at working with timing. And timing is critical because when you are programming some of these more advanced decoders like Loc Sound and, and TCS Wow Sound, and to a certain degree Soundtrax uh, decoders uh, that use these index CVs, uh, you're not just writing one CV, you're writing multiple CVs for every uh, change you need to make. And it's very important that the uh, programming uh, uh, feed, uh, command station or software like Decoder Pro knows how long to wait between each one of these commands uh, in order to get it right. So particularly what I like to do, if I'm going to go back and reprogram a decoder, I'll go into uh, Decoder Pro and work one pane at a time and just change, you know, various CVs on that decoder uh, in sequence. And, you know, a lot of the time that will bring it back. However, in many cases, the best thing you can do is bring the decoder back to life with a factory reset. And what that does, there's, there's settings that are used in decoders that will change all of the uh, CVs back to the way they were when it came from the factory, brand new. And then, of course, you're going to have to go back and reprogram all those settings all over again. Another reason, if you've got it stored in Decoder Pro, you can do that quite easily. Now, the current crop of decoders, for the most part, depend on using uh, the same uh, programming sequence, okay, to do a factory reset. All you have to do is program a value of 8 into CV8. Once you do that, everything should be reset to the factory default values. The locomotive, the decoder, should respond to a, an address of 03. Everything else should work just the way it was when it came from the factory. And often, very often, that's all you have to do to bring a seemingly dead decoder back to life. And it will usually cure a lot of malfunctions related to CVs. So what I want to do now is let's take a look at just what it takes, how you can go about doing that. Uh, I'll show you with a power cap and we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to reset a decoder that I've got here on the workbench. And then I'll also bring up Decoder Pro and I'll show you how you can do it on Decoder Pro. Okay, here we are with the power cap. I've got my uh, uh, Atherin SW1500 that uh, I showed you how to install a decoder in not long ago. And this is, I'll remind you, a very old decoder. It goes back to around 2000, I think. So it's probably 20 years old. Uh, and what I'm going to do here, I've got it set up, you know, I've created a, a portable programming uh, setup here with the uh, NCE power cap. So let me, I'm going to work around to the side where I can see what I'm doing. Uh, in order to reset this, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit for you so I can hopefully show you these settings. Move this loco out of the way so I don't knock it on the floor. Uh, basically then, what I want to do is go into programming mode. And to do that, you hit the uh, programming key down here on the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to have to look. I'm going to program on the programming track here. So I've hit the uh, programming button four times. And it uh, comes up uh, for the programming track. And then I'm going to hit enter. Okay, since we want to change a particular CV, I'm going to use method two, CV programming. And it's asking me which program, or which uh, CV do I want to program. And I'm going to change CV8, as I mentioned. Okay, so I hit that and hit enter. And it's going to read the value in that uh, CV now. And that should come back with the manufacturer's number, 129 Digitrex. Okay, now what I want to do is overwrite CV, uh, write a value of 129, which is the Digitrex uh, manufacturer's number. I'm going to enter a value of 8 and press Enter. And that's all there is to it. That uh, will reset 
your, our, your decoder to the original value. So let's go ahead, I'm going to bring up Decoder Pro on my uh, computer now, and we'll take a look at some of the ways that you could proceed with trying to revive a, a malfunctioning decoder using Decoder Pro. Well, here we are, I've got Decoder Pro open, and as you can see, we're in the uh, basic uh, menu pane here, uh, where you can set the addresses and uh, all of these values for CV29. So this is where I would start by reprogramming these values, okay? And then you can move on, you, you know, at these things like motor uh, control functions and, you know, basic speed control, all of this kind of thing, um, you know, those are secondary. Try your basic stuff first. Get your, make sure your address is correct. Make sure CV29 is correct. So everything is, is responding properly, you know, in that manner. Um, another thing, this is not a sound decoder, so I can't get into that. But, you know, you can go into the sound option and, and try to activate some of those features as well. But, you know, that's a little bit more problematic. Um, if it's going to make a sound, it should go ahead and do that when you first start up. Um, there could be a problem with the uh, mute uh, function. You might want to check that when you're looking at your function map and make sure that uh, that one is operating properly because if that is not working, you might not be able to turn the mute off. Um, that one though, like I say, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, so basically, once you go ahead and write these changes on the sheet or write the full sheet here, uh, then I would venture on, if that doesn't work, you know, I would venture up here to the top of the menu and see this where it says reset. Okay, you click on factory reset. And as you can see, it has two options. You can reset all CVs to their default values, or uh, you can reset all of them except for the user loadable speed table. And let me point out that different decoders uh, offer these type of options. Uh, I know that with uh, with the wow sound decoders, I think there are probably four separate options as far as which uh, bank of CVs you should or you would reset to their default values. And Decoder Pro is great in that it knows which ones uh, are available and it will have them up there in the factory reset option for you to try. So you might, you know, try some of these uh, less invasive uh, procedures, as opposed to going straight to the re reset all CVs. Okay, in this case, since there's not that many options on this old decoder, I'm going to go ahead and hit reset all CVs and click OK. And it's going to do that. Okay, so that, that's all there is to it. So basically then, that uh, reset should uh, give you the type of, 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 of reset that you require in order to get your uh, locomotive uh, responding again. Hopefully that is all that it will take. But, you know, in some cases, the next step after that is to look a little deeper. Now, one thing that I will point out, I said that with uh, wow sound and with uh, loc sound, I, maybe, but at least with wow sound, there are several different options uh, available to you as to which values to write into CV08. Now, over the last 20 years, uh, there have been, uh, and actually, actually over the last 25 years, there uh, have been a lot of other CVs that have been used by different manufacturers. And it, you know, it's an extensive list. QSI has had their own uh, CVs that they would use for a reset. Uh, MTH, of course, uh, uses their own. And, and there's just a lot of different ones, uh, plus, at one time, Soundtracks used a different one. Now they use 08. Everybody is pretty much standardized on using uh, CV8 uh, and writing it to a value of 8 for a complete factory reset. For more information on that, though, I suggest you go to the NCE website, ncedcc.com, and when you go there, click on their information uh, station link. And if you go to their information station and do a search for decoder resets, they have a file there where they have compiled an extensive list 
of all of the different CVs that have been used by different manufacturers and the, and the various uh, values that you write to those CVs in order to get a complete factory reset. If that doesn't work, the next step is to get on the phone with tech support. Call the tech support people and find out you know, what they recommend. Of course, in most cases, they're going to tell you to change CV8 to a value of 08. If you have a decoder that, you know, there's a burn mark on the, uh, on the plastic wrapper, uh, if there's a hole melted through it, and I've seen those, so there are options. It is possible to repair these. So uh, do not overlook that. Don't just throw it in, in the trash bin or your spares box and let it sit. Go ahead, uh, contact them, and uh, it, it's, you know, it's probably, probably in the end will be a lot cheaper to have it repaired than to um, uh, buy a new decoder to replace it. Now, I will say, though, that might not hold for a 10-year-old decoder. Uh, they might not have the components to repair it if it's that old, or um, you might be better off to go ahead and buy a new uh, decoder to replace it because sometimes the features are just so much better now that a 10-year-old sound decoder just isn't worth uh, repairing. You're better off to replace those, I think. And I, you know, I mean, in my case, I've begun actually replacing old sound decoders uh, with new ones. And uh, the sound and, and functions and capabilities are so much better now that it is worth doing that. Well, I hope that gives you a better perspective on some of the things that you can do to hopefully resurrect a decoder in a locomotive that is just not behaving properly and looks dead. So give those steps a try that I just outlined, and hopefully that'll bring yours back to life without a trip back to the factory for a complete overhaul. Um, that's about it for today, so have a great weekend. If you're here in the U.S., have a great 4th of July weekend. Be safe and avoid the virus. You know, wear your mask. And we'll see you again here on Monday with a new video. Take it easy now. Bye.